I'm back again, your tutor, Franklin Luando. In today's video, I'm going to present to you the income tax, particularly deferred tax. Now, under deferred tax, from my past experience, I've discovered that students have a lot of challenges. They do not seem to understand the concepts. So today I'll try to explain in detail the basic concepts surrounding deferred tax. So today we'll focus on the causes of deferred tax. And that is the permanent and temporary difference. I also explain the accounting basis and the tax base. So we we'll also look at the non-current assets, the current assets, specific current assets current liabilities, specific current liabilities, the revaluation of property. So pay particular attention. And I also want to encourage the viewers after you view or watch this video, you are encouraged to ask questions on the aspects of this topic where you do not seem to understand. I also encourage you to make comments about the quality of this video and also whether it is helpful to you. All the comments will be taken very, very seriously and we use them to improve our delivery. For the questions, we may not answer all the questions that will be asked in the chat box, of course, because of insufficient time. Now we can get started. Deferred tax. Abbreviation deferred tax is under IS 12. So deferred tax is that component of tax that relates to the future. In the future, it will crystallize. And therefore, the company should make provision if it is a deferred tax liability and should recognize if it is deferred tax asset. One of the most important issues surrounding deferred tax is that if it is not accounted for, then the information included in financial statements will not be useful to the users of financial statement because it does not faithfully represent the information. Information is firstly represented if it is complete. If it is neutral. If it is predictive. And it can help the users of financial information to make an informed economic uh, decision. Now, again, if deferred tax liability is not accounted for, it will signal to the investors that the company will make a lot of profits and therefore they'll be expectant to receive the dividends. 
also certain the ratios will be overcast, such as earnings per share. It will be overcast, and earnings per share is a key performance indicator for organization. So if it's misleading, it also misleads the investors. So I'll start with explaining the causes of deferred tax. We have temporary difference. Temporary timing difference. Temporary timing difference. The causes normally the causes normally we have the difference between accounting depreciation and tax depreciation will lead to the deferred tax liability normally. So difference between accounting depreciation Accounting depreciation and tax depreciation. They will cause temporary difference. At the end, this difference will reverse because at the end of the expected use life of the asset, the accounting depreciation will be equal to the tax depreciation and therefore it will reverse. Accounting depreciation is disallowable for tax purposes, it is added back. Tax depreciation is allowable for tax purposes, and that will create, it will create the fair tax liability. Tax depreciation is what we refer to as capital allowance. Now I want to demonstrate, I want to demonstrate here by giving a simple uh, illustration, which we are going to use. So if we have a plant, a plant costing 100 million, and the use life, use life is five years, tax depreciation, is 25%. So now what I was saying was the difference between accounting depreciation and tax depreciation, the difference is there because these are given at different rates. Normally the tax depreciation is given at a higher rate, like in this example. So I want to demonstrate here, if we have this, Yes, year one, year two, year three, year four, year five. So the accounting depreciation. So this is five years. So this will be five in 200. We are assuming the scrap value is zero. So there it will be 20. There are 20. There also 20, there 20, there also 20. Accounting depreciation is given there. Now tax, the tax depreciation will be 25%, of 100 will be 25. There it will be 25. There it will be 25. So we have one, two, three, four. There zero. But at the end of the day, the totals will be the same. Now I want you to understand here. So accounting depreciation is disallowable for tax purposes, which means you add back 
tax depreciation is allowable for tax purposes, which means you deduct. So here we are deducting. So which means in year one, there will be a temporary timing difference of five, which means you are going to pay less tax. There also it will be five. Five, there five. In year five, this will reverse positive 20. So if the tax rate, the tax rate is 30%, then here it will be 1.5, 1.5, So you are paying less tax by these amounts. They are also 1.5 then this will reverse six positive. So I've done the illustration there, how the temporary timing difference is caused by the difference between accounting depreciation and tax depreciation. Now, I want now to look at the non-current asset because both accounting depreciation and tax depreciation relates to non-current asset, in this case, the plant. Now, I want you to understand that there is deferred tax liability when the carrying value of an asset, which is the accounting base, exceeds its tax base. There is deferred tax liability when the carrying value of an asset exceeds its tax base. Now, for non-current assets, the carrying value is cost less accounting depreciation. Now, for tax base, a tax base is an amount on which the tax is attributable. Therefore, the tax base for a non-current asset, tax base for a non-current asset is equal to cost less tax depreciation. And that will cause deferred tax liability. Now, where the carrying value of an asset is less than the tax base, there will be deferred tax asset. So I'm also going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate here. This part we can clear it. So we are going to look at the illustration here. We have we have five years here. Years the one, the two, the three, the four. Year five. Now the carrying value of the asset will be 100 less 20 because that is the accounting depreciation. There we are going to have 80. There we are going to have 60. There we are going to have 40. There we are going to have 20. There zero. Tax base. The tax base of an asset will be 100 less 25. There it will be 75. Here it will be 50. There it will be 25. 
there will be zero, zero. Now, if you see here, you find out that the carrying value of an asset has exceeded its tax base. And therefore there is temporary timing difference, which will give rise to deferred tax liability. So difference, which we refer to, that is five, they are 10, they are 15, they are 20, there it will reverse. So assuming that the tax rate is, is 30%. So this will be 1.5, this will be three, this will be 4.5, this will be six, that will be zero. And now I want to explain something very important. Increase in deferred tax is a charge to p and L. That is debit p and L and credit deferred tax liability. Decrease in deferred tax liability is again, therefore credit the p and L and debit the deferred tax asset. Now here we have we start with what was the opening balance for deferred tax? Opening balance here is zero because deferred tax occurs at the end of the year. Then we have closing. Closing balance here is 1.5. The increase goes to P and L. The increase goes to P and L as a charge, which is 1.5, increase from zero. Then opening balance there is 1.5. Closing three and 1.5 again will be a charge. Three there, closing 4.5, increase 1.5, and there six. And Opening 4.5, increase 1.5, and they are opening zero. Opening there is zero, opening zero, closing. Sorry, opening this is. The opening, which will become the closing. So did we put a proper there? We add one. This is 1.5, 4.5. That was the closing. So this becomes opening, 4.5. Opening 4.5. Let me just say clear that part. Good. So the opening there was 4.5, which was the closing. Mm -hmm. Then the closing year six. Then in year five, closing becomes opening six. And there are zero. So this one now reverses. So it reverses six. Now, we need to make a provision 
So this one now, since it was already provided for, it will now be a charge. Sorry, it will now be a credit to P and L and debit in the deferred, in the deferred tax liability, which means you close. So that's how you actually account for deferred tax liability. So we can move to another. Another demonstration. Another demonstration there. The other demonstration now is on the revaluation revaluation of property. Revaluation of property. The revaluation of property, for example, I'll give another example. If the carding value of property is 400, now it is its fair value or revalued fair value is 420. Again, students have challenges on properties when they are revalued. So when property is revalued, its fair value becomes its carrying value. When property is revalued, its fair value becomes the carding value and the previous carding value becomes its tax base. So in this case, it will be carding value 420. And tax base now is 400. And there we have the carrying value of property for 20 has exceeded its tax base. And therefore, there is temporary timing difference of 20. And therefore, there is deferred tax liability. So this is difference. and tax 30%. So this will be six. Therefore the double entry there will be now the debit the P and L with six and credit the deferred tax liability of six. So the tax will be paid when the asset is finally sold. So that is on property. Now I'm going to, to move to current assets. Let's look at interest payable. Interest payable is a liability. Or rather let's start with, since we are on assets, let's look at interest, interest receivable. Interest receivable is an asset. Now I want you to understand that interest receivable is taxed when interest is received. Now, at the end of the year, interest receivable will be the carding value. The carding value of an asset or a liability is its accounting base, in short, the amount included in the financial statements. So here, for example, if interest receivable was $10,000, and 
at 31st December 2022. They are for the carding value of the interest receivable will be 10,000. The tax base, the tax base of interest receivable as at 31st December 2023 will be zero. Why? Because tax is not going to be paid on 31st December 2023. Tax will be paid when the interest of 10,000 is received. So we said tax base is an amount on which the tax is attributed. Now we can't pay tax here because the amount has not yet received and therefore the tax base will be zero. Therefore, the carrying value of an asset has exceeded its tax base by 10,000. And this amount is temporary timing difference. And therefore it will give rise to deferred tax liability. This is the difference. Tax. At 30% will be 3,000. If there is no opening balance for deferred tax liability, the journal entries will be the debit P and L with 3,000 and credit deferred tax liability by 3,000. Are we together there? So now I'll move to current liabilities, in particular the payables. So we'll look at interest payable. Interest payable. If you have interest payable of 4,000, interest payable for tax purposes, it is not allowable if not paid in most tax jurisdictions. So as at 31st December, again, 2023, interest payable in the financial statement is 4,000. That will be the carrying value. Carrying value will be 4,000. And tax base will be zero because we have not yet paid. And if you have not yet paid, interest payable is not allowable for tax purposes until it is paid. When it is paid in the future, it will be allowable for tax purposes in the future, and therefore it will reduce the tax payable. That reduction in the tax payable is what we call deferred. It will read to deferred tax asset. So the difference, the way will be deductible difference. Now, when the carrying value of a liability exceeds its tax base, there is deductible timing difference, which will lead to deferred tax asset. So here we have temporary difference, sorry, deductible now. Deductible difference, which will give rise to deferred tax asset at 30 percent this will be 1200 so now the double entry here will be debit deferred tax asset credit p and l 
That is, we are assuming there are no differences. So we are assuming there are no opening balances. Now, if I want you to understand, increase in deferred tax assets is a credit in the p and and a debit in the deferred tax asset. Decrease in deferred tax asset is a debit in the p and and a credit in the deferred tax asset. That's very important. So this one we have explained. Now I want to go to the trading losses. Trading losses. Where a company has trading losses in most tax jurisdictions, the trading losses can be carried forward and set off against the profits of the same trade. And by carrying forward, it means in the future, the trading losses will reduce the tax payable. That reduction in the tax payable is what we call deferred tax asset. So trading losses, to be carried forward to create a deferred tax asset at the prevailing income tax rate. Now, there are certain things which are very important for a student here to understand. Where a company has been making trading losses for the previous two or more years, that is an indication in the future there will be also a loss. And as such, the tax authorities may not allow such a company to carry forward the deferred, to carry forward the trading losses. May not be allowed by the tax authorities to carry forward the trading losses, which will lead to the deferred tax asset. Again, where a company, where a company's going concern is questionable because of large debts at the reporting debt, it will also not be allowed to carry forward the trading losses. Now, if it is not allowed to carry forward the trading losses, it can set off the trading losses against the temporary timing differences available at the reporting date. But where the entity can demonstrate that in the future, it will generate adequate profits. The demonstration must be based on the existing products. The company should be able to produce projections of future cash flows, projections of future revenue from existing products, not from the launch of new products because new products, there will always be uncertainties. There's a higher risk. So for today, we can end here. And again, I would want to encourage you to ask questions in the chat box surrounding the today's topic. Also, I encourage you to make comments about this video. Our comments, again, will be taken very, very seriously because we know we can only improve if you are giving us comments so that we are able to give you quality lecture 
quality lecture videos. Thank you for supporting us. For new subscribers, please remember to hit the notification button for you to be able to receive the latest videos when they are valuable. Thank you. God bless you.